I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we'll discuss some interesting questions from past test papers of edXL. These questions are shared by my student, Emmy. I hope it will be a learning experience for you. How do we solve examination questions? Let's take these questions one by one. Hi, Emmy. How are you doing? Hi, sir. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Very good, very good. So how is your test preparation going on? Uh, okay, um, I'm trying to balance it alongside bio and chem. So I'm just trying to like evenly use my time as, as well as like kind of taking a break still. So yeah, because my maths exam is the last one, um, I know I have that also time when school starts, but I do want to, but it's the one with the most things to do. So I need to like try and like balance my time wisely. But yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> Hopefully it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so you can share the set of questions which you have for today. We'll just go through them. Yeah. Hmm. So a mix of like circles, exponentials, a bit of graphs. Okay, that's uh, a bit of a this variety. One, this one is uh, integrals, right? Different this looks like integrals, yeah. Okay, so go read the question, please. Yeah. So um, the equation of the curve C satis satisfies dy over dx, which equals two minus x squared over x, where x is greater than zero. So given that the point one, four lies on C, express Y in terms of X. Okay. So we are given a point on it. With that, we can really find the equation. It's basically a differential equation. And to solve yes. such equation, you have to integrate both sides, right? So right. you can rearrange the equation and write dy equals to two minus X squared over X dx, right? And then you can integrate both sides. So that will give you isolate y on the left hand side. Okay. So we get. So do you think it's best to split that fraction into two? Yeah. Or just yeah. work like that. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. So so when you yeah so you can write y equals two integral of so as you are saying let me split them into two parts so minus x square over x will be x correct? Yeah. Dx. So that is what you get. So it's a simple integral. You get y equals to what is the integral of two over x? Um, so um, ln x equals one over x. Yeah. So if we have two over x, then we'll have two ln x. Ln x. So minus x integral will be x squared divided by two. So x squared divided by two means half of x squared, correct? Yeah. And a constant c, correct? So we have a constant c here. Mm -hmm. We are also Plus given, yeah. A point. So Got it. We're given a point, one, four, which lies on C, express Y into, so just plug in this point. Stop it in. Yeah. So what do you get after you plug in the point? So four, four equals yeah. two ln of one minus half times one plus C. Got it. So you can just plug LN it in. One, LN one is zero, so this is zero, right? So you get minus half yeah. plus C. So the value of C is four and a half, right? So we'll add this to here. So it is 4.5, correct? Yeah. So we get our equation, which I can now write as y equals to two ln x minus half yes. x squared plus 4.5. Is that clear? Oh, yeah, yeah. We have to put the half x squared back in, yeah. Correct. So this is the right. expression. We found the value of C. So you get your equation back. So that is how you're going to do this particular part, right? Mm. But I think I think for me in the exam though, yeah. from two over X to get to Lin X, mm. I wouldn't do that. I would have done like, you know, two X to the power of minus one and then started solving something like that. I don't I, know, it's quite hard. Is it is it just me or is it hard to go to Lin X straight away? No, two is a constant multiplier. So, you know, yeah. two is a constant multiplier. So, if it is two over x integral, the same as equals to two times integral of one over x dx, right? Mm. Oh, you can take the two outside. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, that is this part, correct? Yeah, yeah. 
So that is right. all you need. That's clear. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So the way to attempt it is you see this question, we want to get expressed in terms of y, but we've got the differential. So we know we have to integrate and then just split it into two and then work through it and solve. Got it. That'd be <coughs> easy. Perfect. Move on to the next question. Cool. Um, there's a circle one here. Okay, let's see. <coughs> Let's just quickly make it a bit bigger. <coughs> Sorry. Um, figure one above shows a circle with the equation x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 10y minus 8 equals zero. The center, the circle has a center n and radius r. Find the coordinates of n and the value of r. So Easy, just right? do the Wait, you yeah. you can give me the direct answer. Can you give me the direct answer? I'll do the long way, right? Okay. So the so center you, is center five, is the, um, one and one five. And, yeah, and what is the radius? Radius is one squared plus five squared um, plus eight square root. Because the minus eight, yeah. So one plus twenty five plus eight square root, root thirty four. Well, most students will not know this formula. You are kind of an expert on this. So they are going to do completing the squares. So we'll actually do it completing the squares for the benefit of most of my students. Okay. Yes. So definitely. that is how we are going to go. So it is x squared minus 2x. These are the 2x terms. The y term which I have is plus y squared minus 10y. And I prefer to take 8 on the right hand side. So now here we have x squared minus 2x. We are going to complete the square, half of two is one. So we're going to add one square and subtract one square. Rather, yeah. what I will do here is add one square on both the sides. So I'll write eight plus one here, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I have y squared minus 10y. I'm going to add and subtract five square, correct? Which is 25. So on both the sides, I'm going to add five square. I've written 25 on the right-hand side, correct? Yeah. Once you do that, these three become a perfect square, which is x minus one whole square. And these three will give me y minus five whole square. Okay. And, uh, uh, and on the right hand side, we have uh, nine plus 25, which is 34. So clearly from here, since we have this equation of uh, the plus here, right? So we have the equation. Let me rewrite the equation. x minus one whole square plus y minus five whole square equals to 34 basically is root radius root, right? Okay. So from here, we get the result which you just calculated in a second. Center being at one and five. So this point here is at uh, one and this is five and the radius is this point is this point. Uh, no, not from there. So from here, the radius is basically equal to square root 34. Yeah. Okay, so we got the first part. Can you read the next part of this? <coughs> um, the points A and B lie on the circle such that the chord AB is parallel to the x-axis mm -hmm. and has length six units as shown in the figure one above. So part B, find the coordinates of A and the coordinates of B. Okay. So basically, because uh, it is uh, parallel to this, both B coordinates are same, right? So we can say that the coordinate of A is, let us say, A and Y value will be C, for example, okay? And for B also, it will be like B and C, correct? So those are going to be the, uh, the coordinate points, right? We know the center point, which basically is 1, 5. So now you can use the distance I, formula uh, to find yeah. BC, right? So you've got a couple of equations here. You could use. So, yeah. Sorry, you, I, I, um, I know the formula method. That, that would be obviously the best like approach. But I was just wondering, can you do the? Can you do it such that? So we know that um, that point is one five. Yeah, yeah. But can we add like root thirty four and subtract root thirty four from so something or no? Okay, but th this is this is how it is, right? If you look at it, this is kind of a triangle. That's a distance formula. Right? Uh, so we know the distance between the center and B is root 34, right? 
So we can have squares, right? So we could write this as b minus one, or what you could b minus one, basically substituting the value in the equation itself. So we have this equation. So instead of x, write b, right? So we have b mm -hmm. minus one whole square plus the y value being c, right? So c minus five whole square equals to 34. Do you see that? It is the same circle equation because it's a point uh, on the circle. Basically, you can say yeah. you're putting the point on this circle, right? So we have this equation. And with a, I have another equation, which is a minus one whole square plus c minus one whole square equals to 34. You get the idea? Mm, yeah, yeah. So we have two equations. Uh, and from two equations, we have to find these two variables, uh, a, b, c. And the third one is distance between a and b itself, right? Which is b minus a, b minus a whole square, right? Plus c minus c, c minus c whole square is equal to six squared. Is it okay? Yeah. So within A and B, we get another equation. So you have three equations to work with and three unknowns, right? Mm. So this is in A and B, and these two equations, let me write now as one, two, and three. And three unknowns, A, B, and C. So you can actually find the values very easily using these three equations. Is that clear to you? Mm. Because from here, you get B minus A. B minus A is equal to 6. Do you see that? Yeah. Because C minus so you A can... is 0. And you can say B is A plus C. And then plug it in and get your answer. You get the idea? Yeah, yeah. So you can solve for the value of A, B, and C from the given condition. Clear. Perfect. Yeah. Next question. Oh, so I just wanted to ask them um, yeah. for this question, because you know how there were many formulas like back when we were learning circles that you did with chords and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was one that you had like a perpen uh, dic perpendicular bisector through the chord goes through the center. Yeah. Does yeah. that apply here or no? Uh, that is not required, but because you need to only find the coordinate points, that is not required. Oh, okay. So when do you use that one? When do you use that one? Uh, Is it to find the center or something? Yeah, we have to verify in some questions that this, uh, uh, just to verify that the bisector will oh. go through the center or something mm. like that. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, so that's that. Got this one. So, um, given that f of x equals 5e to the power of x minus 2, where x belongs to real numbers. Part a, sketch the, on a separate axis, the curve with the equation y equals f of x. Exponential equation, 5, vertically stretched by a factor of 5. And, and two minus units. 2 means 2 units down, right? So that you could sketch very easily. Yeah. Exponential equation. So let me just... Uh, but when they say vertically stretched by 5, how do you actually show that? It's just going to go really steep. Okay. So one is you could have some coordinate points to work with, correct? Okay. Uh, second, which I think uh, is easiest, is anything to the power of zero is one, correct? Yeah. So anything to the power of zero is one. So on the y-intercept, it will be at five and minus two will give you three. So this will go through the value, which is three. Do you see that? Mm. So that should give you the exponential graph for f of x, more or less. So what you could do to be more precise on this is that you, you now know that if x and y are two points on e to the power of x, in that case on the function, the points will be uh, the x values remaining same. The y values will become 5y minus 2, correct? Yeah. So that is how the transformation will take place. So for the key values of e to the power of x, you could always, for that matter, any exponential function. So good values are always x equals to zero will give me one, correct? Yeah, and then infinity. One will give me one over e, and for one, I'll get the value of e, correct? Hmm. And when x approaches negative infinity, y approaches zero. So that is your horizontal asymptote. 
So this horizontal asymptote has gone two units down since it has been translated two units down, correct? Yeah. So, so more, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, the but graph, initially, was it at? I should draw the graph kind of like this, right? So that it is approaching the horizontal asymptote like this. Yes. Wait, sir, you know, initially, um, exponential plus without the five and the minus two and everything, is the horizontal asymptote at minus? Yeah, initially, no, it's at zero. Initially, initially, it will be kind of like this, right? e to the power of x. Yeah, at where the x-axis is your horizontal asymptote. But now it's moved two units no. down, the horizontal is minus two. Correct, correct. Got it, okay. Not very think... accurately shown. But you can use these values for accuracy. Is that clear to you? Yeah. And then the transformation okay. point, which basically means for the same value of x, this point is going to be, you have to multiply by 5, and then so it is 5 over e minus 2, right? So in this mm -hmm. case, at 0, it will be 3, 5 minus 2. And in this case, at 1, it will be 5e minus 2. Is that clear to you? Yeah. So those will be the points on f of x for accuracy. Clear. Part two is also nice and easy because it's the modulus. So everything will just flip up. Okay, let, me, let me clear this uh, screen, make slightly better, just to show how the modulus will look like because the... Does the horizontal asymptote also move up to two? No. Horizontal asymptote is here, right? The function basically was as we did just saw is kind of like this, correct? Where this point, well, this is not again to the scale, but anyway, this point was at three, right? Mm -hmm. So let me read. Let me read. Because this is a minus two for me, correct? So three will be a slightly ahead. Oh, so this is at three, correct? So basically for absolute function, uh, this part of the graph, which was going horizontally on this side, as you said, will now be approaching this side. Do you see it too? Mm. And from here, it is going to go like this. Oh. That is absolute value of f of x. And you can also find the <laughs> y-intercept by equating zero here for f of x, right? So zero equals to five e to the power of x minus two. So we so have five two. minus two. So two over five is e to the power of x. Take log both sides. So ln two over five is equal to x. So this point here is ln two over five. Is that clear to you? Yeah. Which is minus 0 0.9 yeah it has to be a negative value because this is one less than one. negative side yeah so that is how you will get the absolute function mm -hmm. now we are doing the next part which is absolute value of f of x equals to one right so we can make f of x equal to one or minus one yeah, so basically we are looking at this line and we are finding two values as the solution. Do you see that? Mm. So graph actually gives you the solution more or less. You know, there are two parts. So basically, you have to equate 5 e to the power of x minus 2 equals to 1. That will give you one part, right? And the other one, which has been reflected. Reflected minus means, 1. Yeah, which means minus of this, right? So you can say minus of 5 e to the power of x minus 2 within bracket is equal to 1. Do you get the idea, right? So two different oh. equations. So this is equation 1, this is equation 2. So they yeah. will give you two different solutions. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. But can you also do... Plus and is minus. it both an equation? Oh, okay. Yeah. You can write plus and minus. Is it okay? Mm. The piecewise so, function. Piecewise function. So basically... Uh, this particular function is written in two pieces, which is 5 e to the power of x minus 1 in case the x value is greater than, you can say, equal to ln 2 over 5, correct? And yeah. the negative of 5 e to the power of x plus 1 when x is less than ln 2 over 5, correct? 
Mm-hmm. And then you can solve this equation. So what, what are you going to do? So you get 5 e to the power of s equals 2. Let me write this as plus and minus 1. Is it OK? OK. Bring both together. And then plus, plus 2, right? Plus 2. So that is it. And so e to the power of x is equals to 2 plus minus 1 over 5, right? So we have uh, e to the power of x as 3 over 5. And if I do minus, 1 over 5. 1 over 5. So that gives me the solution as ln, because I'm going to take ln both sides. So x is equal yeah. to ln 3 over 5, right? Or ln 1 over 5. Right. So those are my solutions for this particular equation. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. That's how you're going to do it. Very clear. Both are negative values, okay? It's nice to see the both topics come together, you know. Yeah. So I did. I've done. I've done exponentials and logs in one topic, and I've done modulus and functions in the other. But now it's a co- like a combination of both. Got it. So, yeah. Okay. So I'll do that, and yeah, solve and like because always when I run through it with you, may, like maybe a couple of days later, I'll attempt again and see if I can obviously do it. Because yeah. um, I'm not on the same day, because then it's obvious. Yeah, it has to do it like after a while. Okay, um, so part C, write down the set of values of k for which the modulus of f of x equals k um, has one real solution for x. So that was the point at which, you, you know, the graph, only one solution. Let me again sketch the like graph. Like a tangent? No, no. Okay, oh. let me again, the graph was kind of like this. Is it okay? The one which you had drawn, correct? I know this so the is cusp. Yeah. So this point has only one solution. And um, also, also above this value. So above two, I mean, is this again not, let me clear this. Let me clear. Because that was that value was three, right? Yeah. Clear this. Oops. Where are you? Okay. Let's clear this. Okay. Fine. So okay, let's clear the screen. Let me redo. Okay. Let me accurately, I mean, more or less, uh, sketch the graph, at least to the scale, uh, which gives you two and three values correctly, kind of, right? So we have one part of the graph, which was kind of like this, right? Where this was at three, correct? Yeah. The other part on the left of this was asymptotic to horizontal asymptote, like this, correct? Mm -hmm. This is at two. Now, can you please read the question once again? Yeah. So write down the set of values of k for which the equation modulus of f of x equals k has one real solution for x. Only one real solution means there are, one is this point, correct? The other points are above two, right? So above two, yeah. if I draw a horizontal line, I got only one solution. Is that clear? Oh, yeah. So the value of k is therefore is equal to one value is ln. What was this value? Is it three? Uh, five. Three fifths. Two. Uh, what was it? Two over five, right? Oh, two over five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two over five. So my calculator. <laughs> yeah. Two over five yeah. from here. Minus zero and point nine. Other values that k is greater than two. Is it okay? Do, can you write that as an inequality? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. We are, anything above two. Uh, no, 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 no. <clears throat> Sorry, I just realized my my question didn't make sense. I meant um, together, but I realized k has to equal the lin 2 over 5, and yeah. it has to be greater. You know how sometimes you can write it as 1? Yeah, yeah, you k yeah. equals to ln 2 over 5, right? And then k is greater than 2. Is it okay? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I meant in the notation, in the set yes. notation. This okay. is important, yeah. One real solution. Cool, cool. So at the cusp, and then greater than the asymptote, since it doesn't fail the horizontal line test. Yes. Cool. That's clear. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> um, all right. We got a sequence one. Mm-hmm. A lot of variety here. <clears throat> Read. A sequence is defined such that um, xn is minus 1 to the power of n, where n is greater than or equal to 1. 
Show that the sequence is periodic and state its order. So, n is greater than or equal to 1. So, if n is 1, so minus 1 to the power of 1 is how much? Um, minus 1. And even powers will give me plus, right? Yeah. Or or negative. negative. So, yeah. you see it is periodic, correct? Because it oh. moves from minus 1, plus 1, minus 1, plus 1. Do you see that? Mm. So it is periodic and period is one unit, right? So to show that, can I just show that like you've done? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, okay. I don't know if they want words or something. Yeah, yeah. Cool. When you mean state it's ordered, do you just mean the changing from plus one to minus one? Yeah, so I'll say order is one. I mean, uh, okay. Can we look into the, what do they really mean by order? Do you have the solution set for this? with order two this is let's see if that is defined here for you order between two values it is also in it. can you please read what is given here um illustrates the series is per periodic by writing out at least the first four terms as required allow eg if n is odd the term is um minus one if n is even the term is one mm. so the terms oscillate between minus one and one hence periodic mm. Oh, it doesn't say anything about the order. It just says states correct order. Yeah, yeah. How do we know it's two? Yeah, yeah. This is what I wanted to check. Anyway, you check with your book, okay? Because normally I haven't seen oh. the order for sequences in this fashion. You get my point, right? Oh, right. Okay. With order two, I mean, is it two positions they're trying to say or what? Right. So I'm not oh, very okay. clear about it. So please check that part in your book, right? Rest yeah, of I'll it. send it to you. Because uh, I haven't also heard about the... I, I must have missed it in my book as well. Yeah. About order. Check, check this out. Okay. Okay. No. Part B. Mm. Given an integer k, which is greater than 1, state the value of the um, sum of, like... I don't really know how to phrase that. Um, but n, n up goes from 1 to k in the case where k is odd and where k is even. So... If k is odd, you, that means the sum of terms. So the number of terms are either, let, let us say n equals to 1. Right? So if n is 1, this is my first term, right? n is minus two, 1, then it is plus, right? Then I have minus 1, plus 1, correct? Minus 1. Yeah. Plus one. So if n is here, my it ends at minus 1 if it is odd, correct? Yeah. If k is odd. If k is odd. But if it is even, it ends at plus 1, correct? And that's when k is even. Correct. So if you have odd number of terms, which is, let us say, if we have these number of terms, the sum will be that plus and minus will be always 0. So you are ending with minus 1 as the sum. Is that clear? But if we have, wait, do you mean if we have an odd number of terms? Yes. 1, 2, 3, right? So 1 and 2 will plus and minus will cancel. Oh. Third one will remain, right? So every even combination cancels. Whereas if it was and even, they will all cancel. They will all cancel. That will give me 0. zero. All right. Is that clear to you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But I remember last, no, last, um, like when I, I don't know, in year 10 or something, we did okay. a question like this and it was everything before. You did a whole lesson on it. And I didn't understand it back then. I, yeah, will, I will again, I will tell you. Now, there's a very interesting series, which is called Grandy's series. I think it was that uh, or something. So let me just uh, show you Grandy's series on this. Let me clear the screen. You'll love it, right? So, so, so I'll just, this is actually oscillating string, right? So for infinite terms, it will not have a, and now, so this part is okay. When you know that there are odd number of terms and when yeah. there are even number of terms, then you get this sum, correct? Right. Now, let me add part C to it, part 3 to it, right? Part 3 is, if K approaches infinity, find the sum. That is to say, sigma N equals to 1 to infinity for Xn. Can mm -hmm. you tell me the answer of this question, part 3? 
which I've added. No. Now, it's very important to see that for an infinite series, we have a sum only if it converges, right? Oh, where, where it was like R is le modulus of R is less than one. Correct. In this case, it is oscillating. Oh. Not converging. So the rule doesn't apply. So cannot find the sum. Oh. Very, very important thing to understand. You get the idea. So only if it converges, if it oscillates or like diverges, you can't find the sum. You can't find the sum. Oh. And now I will show you one. why you can't find the sum. Because as they have already shown you here with two examples, that if k, let us say there are infinite numbers, but if infinite numbers are odd, you land up with minus one. If mm. they're even, you land up with zero. That means it could be any value, not a distinct value. Since yeah. it is not a distinct value, you say that you're not sure about the sum, so you cannot find the sum. You get the reason. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But here is a very interesting twist to it. Can the sum be half? Okay. <laughs> I know. If it is even, then as you have seen here, the sum is zero. And yeah, because they will count. If it is odd, then it is uh, minus one. That hmm. is number at whatever may be at the end. It could be even or odd, right? It cannot be anything else, correct? Yeah. Any number, if it is a natural number, we're talking about these natural numbers, they will hmm. be either even or odd. But I'm asking you a question. In this infinite long series, can the sum be half? That is my question. Can, I mean, I know infinite series does not have any solution and there are many reasons. Yeah. One, of course, we have seen it is oscillating, not converging. But le let me show you how I can show that this sum could be half also. Oh. Yeah. So it technically it does have a sum. <laughs> yeah, I will show you. So let's say sum is S, right? And we are saying some of the series is like minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, kind of like this. Is that okay? Yeah. Kind of like this. So if I have, I, I, what I'm trying to do here is that I'm just taking minus outside. If I take minus outside, my series becomes what? My series becomes uh, minus, one, outside, minus one, one, minus one, right? Plus one. Minus one. It just does the same thing inside. And then it repeats, right? Do you see that? And and minus one and plus one and, and, and it repeats. Do you see that? Mm. Correct. So I could actually look at see it kind of it gives you an idea that it kind of repeats, right? Okay. So if I do one thing like this, that let me say also I could write this sum as minus one and then from here, I am writing minus one once again. Minus outside from here. Now. Is it okay? Mm. Then what do I get here? I get here, if I write minus, instead of plus, I get minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, and so on, right? Do you see that? Oh, yeah. Now look, look here. This sum is equals to minus one and minus of, what is all this? This is also S. Oh, yeah, the same. Oh, minus s. Right? So I have to know, I can solve this, right? I oh, can bring it to the left s. side. I can bring it to the left side. So it is s plus s is actually equals to minus 1. In minus this 1. Side. So 2s is equals to minus 1. s equals minus a half. Minus half. <laughs> Clearly. So the sum can be minus a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that series starts with plus 1 and then it was a half, right? Um, now this series started with minus one. So we have minus one as the residual. So you got yeah, right, right. Do you see that part? If mm. you have this kind of mathematics with it, right? Saying that this is an infinite series with some S and then you manipulate, you can actually land up with many different types of <laughs> sum, right? Mm -hmm. be, as you've seen, it could be zero, it could be one, minus one, it could be minus half. Right, right. 
So does this only work with um, sums like to infinity? Yeah, yeah. That yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Because it's especially works with the series which are not converging because they do not have uh, a realistic value of the sum of infinite series, right? Right, right. So all oscillating, for example, if I have sine x or cosine x graph, right? It basically yep. oscillates between mm. the values from plus to minus one. Two. Minus one. Well, mm. infinite values in between them, you don't, you're never sure which value it will be, right? So any right. could end up with, correct? That's very clear. Oh. So say in this series, which is going from minus one to zero, right? So since it is going to minus one to zero, we could arrive at minus half also, correct? Does it make sense? Mm. So that's what happened. <laughs> You wouldn't, oh yeah, because because from the basic like book rule, it says that if R is not, the modulus of I is not less than one, then you can't get the sum. And then this kind of defeats that purpose or like that, that explanation. Yes. Because of the uh, oscillation. If you get this question and that is the part, then you have to answer just as we did. Since it is oscillating and it is not converging, it, the sum cannot be found. Yeah, yeah. Right? Again, very important question. So I just That's showed you clear. it could be like minus half also. Why just uh, zero and minus one? It could be anywhere right. in between. You get the idea? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole thing, right? So, so can so other sequences be like anything in between zero and minus one? Is there oscillating? Yes. Oh. Oh, okay. I mean, depending on what are their limits? What are yeah. their limits? No, I thought, I thought, is it just um, minus a half or half in between those or, no, I meant, I meant minus a half or is it any actual value between yeah. zero and minus one? This minus half would be easy for us to figure out, but I think if there is a research scholar on this particular topic, they would be in a position to give you many other yeah. values. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but still, just even like go, even just like thinking about it, it's really uh, interesting. interesting. That's nice. Yeah. It is a very interesting yeah. series. It's called Grandy's series, okay? So you oh, can right. show Grandy's series. So his series normally starts with one, right? One minus one, one minus one, one minus one. So they yeah. get the result as between zero and one, and the mid value being half, right? right? Yeah, and yeah. This series started with minus one, so that's why. Minus half. Minus mm. half, right? Yeah, yeah. Very clear. So I think we can end our session on this note. That's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, grand <laughs> I'll kind of make a video on this particular thing. It's been pending for a very long time. Oh, has it? <laughs> sequence and series chapters. Yeah. So, Amy, could you summarize what you have learned today? Yes, we did quite a, a bit from um, uh, like using the integration, um, trying to like, that was a nice straightforward question <laughs> from differentiating. Um, then we did the uh, graph question, uh, which was merged in with a bit of modulus. So um, that was nice, understanding piecewise functions and also graphically drawing them. And then as the questions followed up, trying to find solutions, because we drew the graphs in advance, like you always say, our questions help us out. Um, we could immediately find the solutions just by drawing the, like y equals one on the graph. So we could immediately see that was really clear. Even if they don't tell you to draw the graph, just draw it anyway, because it's helpful. Um, and then we did our sequences um, question, um, just understanding about um, convergence of, uh, series and um and if they dive like if they converge then you can find um the sum Some but if they diverge or oscillate yeah you can't so that was interesting yeah That's and then grande series of course <laughs> yeah okay then with that note enjoy your All christmas right. and have thank you sir season greetings to you as well and your family bye sir bye.